Traveling solo again with only the thoughts in my helmet, I started the day with an early walk and breakfast in Sausalito. The quietness and cool morning air coming off the water was calming and peaceful, but I was ready to run. Within the hour, I was passing through Healdsburg, grabbing a glimpse of vineyards. traveled on Dry Creek Road and over for a top-of-the-world view of Lake Sonoma. I was on Skag Springs Road heading to Stewart's Point on the Pacific Coast Highway. This was a road that I studied on the map and envisioned riding for a long time. It lived up to every expectation and then some. It went through forests, over hills, and the terrain changed as I approached the coast. Arriving at Stewart's Point and heading north on the PCH, it was beautiful, cold, and then there was the wind. Pacific Coast Highway north of Stewart's Point was an amazing ride. Arriving via Skaggs Road, which is a definition of a motorcycle road, was a blast. Unfortunately, PCH was a blast also. The winds were gusting for many miles while the temperature continued to drop. The views and the riding was still more than splendid power of the waves hitting the cliffs, the wind, and the overall awesomeness of the place was humbling. It was great riding and I felt tremendous gratitude. Passing through Fort Bragg and then up the PCH to where it becomes 101, I entered Humboldt County, the Emerald Triangle, which I believe is the largest cannabis producing region in the USA. I rode through Humboldt Redwood State Park on the Avenue of the Giants. Avenue of the Giants is a road that parallels US 101 for 30 plus miles, with the benefit of going through old growth redwood groves of amazing towering trees. It was peaceful and calm. The natural beauty of the place was untouched, except for clearing of fallen trees on the road. I started to feel the time of day, the miles, and the dropping temperature, which all reminded me it was time to find a route. I headed to Fortuna, where there were several places to stay, and guess what, another brewery. This wasn't planned, but it seemed like more often than not, I was within a reasonable distance of a local brewery. It was either serendipity or there was just a lot of breweries in this country, maybe both. Checking into a motel and changing out of my motorcycle gear, I took my helmet hair and I walked for five minutes. 
Fast forward, however long it might have been, but I'll measure the time by a clam chowder, a burger, and two different IPAs. I was back in my room. Another great day and happy to have a pillow. Heading up the 101, it hugged the coast and became the Redwood Highway, passing through groves of redwoods. I was planning on making that right turn today to head east into Oregon. It would be a defining maneuver on the journey and a new phase of the trip. Northern California had an entirely different vibe. It felt even more laid back and remote. The vastness of the redwoods lined the coast and all the parks were strung together with different names. Some were state parks and some were part of a national park. It was hard to figure out. What I did know was that there were redwoods everywhere. This was the Redwood Highway. I passed through some Northern California towns. Arcata was very interesting. It was a town of eclectic shops, a bookstore, a record shop, coffee cafes, and bistros. There was a wide range of people going about their day. You had the 20-something travelers who were either passing through or who once were passing through and decided not to leave. As you'll find in many of the California towns this far north, there was a population of homeless or panhandlers. Very different to those who just looked like a shower and a shave might have been something in the distant past. You see a lot of panhandlers. It was hard to tell their specific circumstances. Some were holding signs that they were veterans, others didn't have a sign, and many were just camped out on the street corners. Very sad to see the volume of panhandlers who appeared to be spending their days on the streets and possibly nights in the campgrounds. Through forests of redwood trees, I found myself riding along the beach. I stopped and took the opportunity to take it in. I knew this would be my last encounter with the Pacific Ocean on this trip. I walked to the shoreline on the beach and was feeling tremendously grateful for this journey in more ways than one. I reached down and put my hand in the ocean as the waves reached the tip of my boots. It was as if I was shaking hands with the Pacific, thanking the ocean for welcoming me and for the spectacular West Coast experience. The smell of the ocean and touching the water was a very meaningful moment that I savored. I continued to head up the coast and stopped for lunch in Crescent City, California, an appropriate place to start the northeasterly route and take that right turn. I didn't feel like I was particularly anywhere special, just that it was time, time to leave California and start a new phase of my journey. Once again, I was on a road lined with redwoods, elevation changes, twists and turns, but this time I was heading east. Entering Oregon really did mark a new phase of the trip. My focus was to get to Medford, Oregon for a double overnight, which was long overdue. I arrived in Medford and found a place with a great rate. On top of that, they had free happy hour beer, wine, and burgers. Jack. This was a great place to chill for a couple of nights and to take a day to breathe and catch up on things. A great rest day. Breakfast in the hotel was followed by a decent workout in the gym. The gym was followed by washing the motorcycle and repairing some leaky paneers. I did laundry and also needed to catch up on a few things. I had been doing and doing all day, but it felt super to check a bunch of things off the list. No packing or unpacking today, just catching up. I explored Medford, but one day off the road was enough. I was dreaming about roads, routes, and tomorrow's ride to Crater Lake. I left Medford and made my way northeast to Crater Lake, traversing the Rogue River and some great roads.
snow still boarded the road in, out, and around Crater Lake National Park. Arriving at the West Rim, the sights were awesome. The reflection of the mountains and the pristine still waters of the lake were spectacular. I had anticipated getting to Crater Lake before this trip began. It's one of those must-see destinations. Of course, it's one of those places that everyone photographs, but I wanted to stand there. I wanted to witness another act of nature from millennia past. It was formed 7,700 years ago by an eruption that destroyed a mountain, created a crater, and whose volcanic lava sealed the crater for what is believed to be the deepest freshwater lake in the USA. There were lots of tourists and picture takers, some of whom would never witness the lake except through the lens of their camera or screen on their iPhone. Even for those people so caught up in picture taking, there was an overall sense of awe that everyone shared. I stopped and looked at the lake with my own eyes. I took more than one deep breath in and exhale. I felt gratitude and thanked the universe for the pleasure of being there at that moment. And then I snapped one too many pictures. Leaving the lake, the route took me north and then a hard turn east. My trajectory was the Grand Tetons, Yellowstone National Park, and that general area, which would take me several more days of travel to get there. It was early in the afternoon, so I kept going. The turn east after Bend, Oregon, was a 120 plus mile straight east road. No gas station, badlands, 4,000 plus foot plateau, Mad Max movie setting, desert of vast nothingness. From Bend, Oregon, through the Oregon Badlands, I arrived in Hines, the end of the 120 plus mile run in the absolute middle of nowhere. It was just a place to stop and I would be happy to move on in the morning. Leaving Hines, Oregon, I was ready for the second stretch of 125 miles on the Central Oregon Highway. The road changed. The farmland gave way to sweepers and elevation changes. Twists and turns, the road was taking me to a new plateau following what I believe was the Snake River. The landscape was engaging, the road was fun, and the ride was energizing. As I approached the border with Idaho, things changed again. I rode through Boise, Idaho to grab lunch. I was baking in Boise. The temperature skyrocketed into the high 90s. It was a 100 mile stretch to Craters of the Moon National Monument. Arriving, it was an interesting sight, and I had a brief ride through the park on Crater Loop Road. The volcanic rock and lava were a spectacle and interesting to see. It was something to do and worth doing, but I was happy that I didn't go out of my way to see it. It was on the path to Grand Teton and Yellowstone, so it was worth incorporating into the trip. I decided to push on to Idaho Falls, one step closer to Grand Teton National Park. I checked into a room in Idaho Falls with AC and Wi-Fi. I was happy to have a place to stay and be off the road. Tomorrow would be another epic day, the Grand Tetons in Wyoming. It was a feeling I had over the last couple of days since I started that right turn east, pointing me in the direction of home. For the longest time, I was going to somewhere. I was leaving home and the miles between home and where I was were always increasing. Now, the distance as the crow flies between where I was at and home was going to be decreasing daily. I just didn't want to be hyper-focused on coming back and fast-forwarding the days to the 50th. It was something I needed to be diligent about. I was to be home on the 50th day, but I wanted to savor and cherish each of the remaining days just as I did the days at the start of this journey. A lesson in being in the moment. Hey there, fellow travelers. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for coming along on the journey. I'll be posting new episodes pretty regularly. So if you're interested in following along, then I'd be really grateful if you did that YouTube thing. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell down below and you'll be informed when new stuff is uploaded. If you really like the video, then give it a big thumbs up and feel free to leave a cool comment as well. 
Thanks for traveling along. We'll see you on the road next time soon on the channel.